And we are live. Live! Get him, babe. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> I love that. That was good. That's all that came to my mind. That's good. <laughs> um, we have a lot going on today. Uh, we have, first and foremost, everybody's just tuning in. It's mm -hmm. thundering really loud outside, so there's a very strong possibility that this may flicker. And if we disappear... The house didn't blow up. It's just thunderstorms. It happens right. in Florida. We lose power. Um, we have a whole lot of housekeeping to do before we get into the book breakdown. But do we want to open the gift first? Do we want to start with some excitement? Totally forgot about this. Yeah, let's so, do that first. We've received a gift. And I believe I know who this is from, but I, it, I could be wrong. We've received this thing, but it says, unwrap your present before opening the em envelope. Okay. And I really just want to open the envelope. Yeah, because it's backwards. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to read the, the card first. It's polite. Well, actually, I'm somebody, when I read a book, I will always read the last sentence of the book before I start the book. That's cheating. It's not cheating. It is. You're getting... I like reading that last sentence. I'm like, ooh, what's going to happen? I'm, I'm imagining all of these <laughs> things now. And then things start lining up and I read that last sentence again. I'm like, oh, my God, I just went on this journey with you guys. Very nice purple gift. Little card guy. Oh my gosh, you guys. So it's from Jen A. Jen A. <laughs> Jeff and Ronnie. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so Jen A said, send her tiny balls. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff and I are so sorry that the flags weren't touch compatible. Jen A suggested these tiny balls to use as red and green flags instead. Okay. I appreciate that, guys. I felt so bad when I touched that flag and I was like, hey. <laughs> I was like, no, somebody spent money on this. Okay. That's one of the things about my autism that I don't think is a superpower. <laughs> no, no, it's really not. I wish I could just touch things and wear articles of clothing. This bag is so confusing for me. Oh, okay. Oh, it's another bag. Can uh, one of my moderators throw the P.O. box up in the chat, please? They look like they're tiny apples. Is that what they are? They are. They're little red and green apples. I love this so much better than the flag idea. Yeah. Oh, are these going to get super big? Uh, you... Oh, I don't know. Are they squishy? Yes. Okay. They might. Do you have, or like. I am not throwing a knife at you, but yes, I have one. Okay. Thank you. You cut yourself with my knife. I, <laughs> I haven't told you guys about that. So there was a time. When we were still dating. And thank you. This one is as well, yeah. And while we were still dating, I spent, we had a little sleepover. And I was getting ready the next day for work. And I had this little belt that I was wearing with my dress, but it had these little tassel things I hated. So I was like, hey, babe, can I like borrow your pocket knife? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I'm doing my thing. And then like two minutes later while he's in the shower, I'm like, hey, babe, do you have any Band-Aids? <laughs> it was almost instant. It was instant. I wasn't expecting it to be that. that right. Just well, I keep I keep my knives sharp. Like yeah. I, I have I normally will carry a box cutter for that kind of shit. But like I don't use paper or my knives to cut paper or open boxes. They're, they are a tool, right. but they're, they're a self-defense tool. So like, I want them to be razor sharp. So the fact that I handed it to you and you instantly cut yourself, like there was a, a moment of, oh shit, I should have warned her. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was that, how the fuck did she just do that? <laughs> it, it sucked too. It was right between the webbing and my fingers. Yeah. And I had to go in and pierce that day. I'm moving over to you for a minute because I have to, to make a okay. change to something real quick. Well, you do that. I'm going to go ahead and open this envelope then. Oh, it was the same note that was just posted on the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I am obsessed with this. Thank you guys so much. You guys are so... Th I'm emotional. So thoughtful. Thoughtful. So, so thoughtful. 
It makes me so happy when you guys send me things. I have everything, almost everything sitting on my desk. I have, um, I am just blanking on her name. I'm picturing her discord name, but that's not her name. She crocheted like the little peach and stuff for me. And I have those little potatoes. Those sit by my computer. I have a little gnome that somebody sent us that's sitting on the desk. Not the desk, but the thing back there. I have my gavel over here. I got this guy sitting over here. Which the therapist truly, truly enjoyed, by the way. Yes. Pamela loved it. AJ just, hang on. I've got, there's so much fucking going on. I can't wait until he's here full time and I don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, not everyone knows what the apples are for. Can you explain? Oh, Okay, so everybody, I had an idea during one of the podcast recordings to get actual red flags because we say red flag. Oh, that's a red flag. Oh, that's a red flag. I think having the actual visual representation going through an email saying, okay, we have 16 red flags of things that you've pointed out. When someone hears that, hearing that number versus actually seeing the quantity is like, wow. So... It was a little jokey joke, but I think the bottom line of it is that would be beneficial to people to see it, to actually see the representation of it. I think we should get you clear glass jars to set on the end table mm -hmm, and just pop them in. So you can just pop them in. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> the people of the To Be Better community, Ronnie and her husband sent the red flags and I was super stoked about them until I touched them. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't explain the texture. It's like that. Almost like a nylon, but plastic fabric-y. Just didn't do it for me. So they sent me red and green apples instead because my tism kicked in hard on yep. that one. Yep. I love that you guys are so thoughtful. It is so appreciated. Okay, so let's do a little bit of house cleaning. Okay. Um, we definitely need to hit up Hobby Lobby now uh, because I, I think I, the jar idea is kind of cool because you can just leave it on the table and we can adjust the camera angles so right. that you can see that. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the Four Agreements book breakdown with Peaches Teaches. This is an intro to the book. Yes. But this is going to be Patreon exclusive content after today. Mm -hmm. um, we are dropping the Thursday night live streams. Um, we are moving. Okay, I have a, have a, a, a we have a cheat sheet <laughs> playlist because I don't remember. Um, the premieres on Monday are moving to 10 a.m. from 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we will be doing a Patreon live moving forward at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday nights. Um, Wednesdays will continue to be your Peaches Teaches at mm -hmm. 11 a.m., but those will be Choice Theory next week. Correct. So Choice Theory is being moved from Thursday night to Wednesday morning. To Wednesday morning. And then Sunday night, we are going to continue doing the expedited reads. Mm -hmm. And that gives us the ability to have Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night available to do interviews, Patreon content when we're ready to do that, take vacations when we want to, et cetera. Just have a break. Right. Um, we are currently looking at the week of September 11th to the, the 28th, I believe. In September, we're looking to take a vacation. So we will not have lives unless we decide to do them from the hotel. That's. Uh, it should be a week. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Yeah. So it'll be Tuesday to Tuesday. Okay. So unless we actually bring everything with us, we won't have lives that week. Mm -hmm. um, but that's obviously so far in advance that that could change. Right. Um, we are we are streamlining our content a little bit more. All of the vlogs that we have currently been posting to Discord are moving into Patreon so that Patreon is getting more content. Mm -hmm. We are working on getting... Um, uh, AJ, I'll send you a picture of it because some of it doesn't really apply. There's a whole lot of notes on here. Um, we are working on, on doing more content for Patreon. You wanted to do smoke sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, we want to be able to just do random pop-up lives for Patreon. And, and like, that's something that we are leaning more towards because we feel like we want a more personable relationship with people mm -hmm. in terms of the Patreon discord community. Um, we also have, um, uh, fuck, there was something else and I don't remember what it was. Oh, the whiskey room is being installed this weekend. I've been talking to Adam from a &R Builders all day today. Um, and by all day, I mean spend like a half hour. It's just a lot of back and forth. Right. Um, he should, depending on weather, have the whiskey room completely done by Sunday. So next week we get to get that set up. Once that's set up, I have two interviews lined up. So we'll be moving more into interviews. If somebody is a life coach, if you are a creator, if you're an artist, if you're a musician, if you watch our content and you bring value to 
your community in some way, shape, or form, please email us. Overcome a life of addiction. Yeah, something, right? We want to be able to start interviewing people to get other people's stories out there to ask questions because I feel like that's the evolution of the pod. Mm -hmm. Emails will always be done. We currently have three screeners. We are doing a lot of rejection. If you are sending emails with SADB or child abuse, this shit is being put into a do not read folder and it's not going anywhere. We don't see it. Um, moving forward, also Patreon emails, because we are backed up on both platforms, mm -hmm. are being moved into one general platform and then cherry picked. So if you've sent us Patreon emails and we haven't read them yet, they are getting put into a pile. Mm -hmm. The wizards behind the screen are, are making things happen for us to move a little bit forward. Um, the side piece has been completely removed. It is now rum ruminations and revelations where we do deep dives into conversations. So for those of you who are like diehard fans, if you have watched all of the side pieces and we have not covered a subject that you would like to see us cover, send us an email as well for that, because then mm -hmm. that can give us topics. Don't just go, you should talk about video games. Right. Give us an example of what's going on in your life so that we have some sort of lead into the conversation, because it's going to help the conversation evolve a little bit. Mm -hmm. The wizards behind the screen. I I'm, like that you call them that. Yeah, yeah. because they're, they are they are the almighty wizards. Without them <sighs> running the show, we wouldn't. This is this is evolving. Yeah. We, we we are no longer involved in the email process until we read them. We're not really involved in Discord anymore. Uh, I am heavily involved in Discord in that I like to talk shit. Right, so but I, we're not <laughs> operating it. Right. it. It's all them. They, we're not doing they handle all of it. Um, and we also have AJ producing handle on all the YouTube shit. So mm -hmm. like this this community is building. Um, I, I'm getting ballsy because we hit a million yesterday on, on YouTube, uh, TikTok, and we're going to hit a mil, uh, 100,000 on YouTube probably by Friday um, whoop, wrong button. We are at 97,680. So we're what, 2,220 away? Yeah. Um, from 100,000. So I, I got in my shit a little bit yesterday. Like I felt like, okay. Right. Yesterday was a big day. I, uh, real quick. Okay. We had, um, the million hit. Right. Um, we have... Moved forward financially with some things I don't want to get into, but mm -hmm. there, but there were definitely a plus yesterday, a huge plus yesterday with that. Um, we got we locked down our first actual sponsor for the the streaming podcast yesterday. So that 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 was huge, um, and then other things that were happening behind the scenes that are starting to move forward. People reaching out about interviews, and I was I was on my shit yesterday. I mm -hmm. felt like we were a little bit more important than we actually are yesterday, and I got on my ass and I sent an email to Bunny's manager yesterday about trying to get a podcast with them. And if that means we go to Vegas and, and get on their podcast or we try to get them out here or whatever the case may be, fuck it. That's the way it's got to be. Um, and we are trying to get back in contact with Pearly Things because when we first started, we actually spoke to her. Yeah, she reached out to me. About possibly doing a podcast, a podcast with her. And I don't know if I'd want to fly to Europe for that. I don't know if I want to be like a backup on her show. I think that I would rather interview her mm -hmm. and that can be done through through Zoom or whatever. But right. um I, I'm I'm really trying to move things forward now on the business side of this while you still do the book thing and like we're trying to downsize our schedule to allow future uh, um, evolution to happen. And um, I have it in my head. I have I had it. I have a lot going on in my head and, and I want to see the clothing line develop. I want to see a standalone tattoo studio podcast coffee shop because I've always had the dream of owning a coffee studio that's just got beanbags for people to hang out in. This is just dreaming right okay. um how cool would that be to have like a five thousand square foot space like what we saw in saint augustine where that soap store was to have a tattoo studio a dedicated coffee shop and then a podcast station upstairs mm -hmm. where we could go wherever we decide to live and go to work and have our home life be our fucking home life again and have a studio where we can go and do all that shit and still have a home studio when we're ready to do home stuff is all hypothetical. I'm getting too big with my head. Right. See, this is I'm on my bullshit right now. I want to doctor fill it. Yeah. I want to interview people in front of a in front of an audience. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one day we could have a seminar where people come, and we can have people lined up already at the event. Yeah. And have them come on stage, and we can talk about whatever we're talking about. We can problem solve with whatever the relationship if they're comfortable doing that. Yep. Life discussions. Could do a whole lot of things. This, this, people calling this a show already got me in my head. 
and all the all the the evolution yesterday was a big fucking day for us and i was mm. in my shit yesterday morning like i was in the fucking dumps yeah and by the time i went to bed last night i i had turned that right around mm -hmm. so i i'm really um i, I don't know i i talked to, we went to lunch with jordan yesterday and um, found out that he's got a, a giant warehouse space that's not being used. So in the event that we actually create a clothing line, he gave me permission to store shit in the warehouse. Like, we, we can really start doing stuff. Jordan, you're such a homie. Yeah. I want you to know that. Thank you. Um, I, I know that, like, we do limited drops right now. Mm -hmm. I want to get to the point where we continue to do limited drops, like, on a monthly basis or a bi-monthly basis. But I want to do a, a run of shirts maybe every three months. That is something that we order five or 600 shirts of and just leave it in stock. And when they run out, they run out. And if we want to reorder them, we can because the love and not love is not enough shirt has got a lot of requests. Yeah. And though that's done, the original shirt, we can redesign it and put it back out as something different that still says love is not enough. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, but that doesn't affect the original people who got the 160 shirts. They still feel like they got a limited thing um, because it's the original. You want to know what I've been thinking about? Yes. Making a clothing line with the To Be Better brand. Of just my peachisms. Yeah. Like the word and then a definition. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that would work. It, it would definitely work. There's definitely enough people out there who find that shit funny enough yeah. to wear it. You know, um, I have learned because of the way that I am with my clothing, that texture for the shirt matters. Mm -hmm. Like the quality of the t-shirt is the most important thing. And then the layout of the, the design. Some people don't like front prints. Right. Some people don't like back prints. People want to see it when they wear it. So like there's that weird... Um, you have to find like is 80% want front prints or does 80% want back prints? And like we're we're evolving that now. Mm -hmm. Um Jordan has got both of your aprons in, the the, the next two yes. test aprons. So we're going Friday, Thursday or Friday to look at that depending on our schedules. Um I am bringing a camera for that so that I can try to record that again. Although I think I'm gonna bring a, a faster prime lens because it was very dark at that F4 because of his office. Yeah. Um I don't know. Podcast is evolving. We we are fucking doing the thing. I don't want to keep yapping. That was most of the housekeeping. The t-shirt thing was the last thing I wanted to cover because somebody in TikTok asked you about that and that um, the merch thing. The reason I want to start carrying the merch full time is because every time we do a drop within two or three days, people are like, I'm going to go order a shirt. And I'm like, no, you're not. We're sold out. Yeah, they sometimes, I mean, they've been getting faster and faster. The first right. drop took like a week. Mm -hmm. The second drop did not. The right. third drop took like... 24 hours and this time it was like 18 yeah so we are getting there and i don't know if that means we need to order more shirts and maybe go from 160 to 200 or do we start looking into long-term carrying i, I don't know i, I want to get to the point as well whereas if we're doing aprons that you can actually get with a seamstress and go okay this is what i want and have them spec it and build it to your standards so it's a it's a true to be better product and not an apron that we've thrown a fucking logo and a catchphrase on. Yeah. But that's, that's, that's the goal for me. And I, I think that you and I need to sit down and maybe even make this a Patreon thing where we do a one, three and five year plan with a vision board. I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. I saw somebody ask if we have any shirts left. We, no, no. Um, this past run is gone. Yeah. The, the egos kill talent. We're, I think we're out of the check-in shirts too. I think that at this point there might be like two or three small check-in shirts, but I think everything is completely sold. Yeah. Um, I just ordered another thousand of the tribal and shirts from Jordan and we're going to start planning the next run of shirts, but I don't think that it's going to drop in June. I think it'll probably be like the first or second week of July. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to try to stay out of the chat. Okay. I have um, I have AJ's chat pulled up over here. I I want to stay away from super chats unless they're paid, and we'll read those at the end. Okay. But I'm not. I don't want to do the super long live stream where we just okay. answer questions and shit at the end. So. All right. Do you have anything housekeeping wise that you want to get into before we get into that? Because I want to be able to close these screens down and pay attention to what you're saying because I didn't read this book yet. Housekeeping wise. Oh, I do. I want to talk about the women's group. So the women's group is on hold right? until life gets figured out. Which we're working on. We right. are working we on it. We are that. working on it. We are working towards it. Um, this past week, a lot of things happened. We went out of town unexpectedly. Both of the kids got sick. So my time has pretty much been non-existent when dealing with like reading and making notes for the right. podcast. And I fell way behind on the women's group. I am not checking in as much as I want to be. I'm not able to be as interactive as I would like to be. I missed one of the calls and I had the prompts in my notebook for work three and four, week three and four, and now they're gone. Yeah. 
So everything is just a shit show right now. The women's group, the pr- public women's group in the Discord is still a thing. The private women's group where it is the, we have the challenges and the prompts and we're working through things together, that is on hold. Once I pick that back up, the 10 women that are in it now are the women I'm going to be picking back up with and we're going to just continue where we were at. Depending on how the rest of it plays out once everything calms down, then we're going to reevaluate and decide on whether or not this is something that we can do paid wise right. for the community. I just want to put that information out there because constantly I'm seeing people pop into the Discord. Where's the women's group? How do I join the women's group? Right. How do I pay for the women's group? I want everyone on the same page. Yeah. Um, I have been um, just piggybacking off that. I have been mm-hmm. in contact with Dakota, Zach, um, and, a, and, and Steven in the men's group. And I've talked to a couple other people who have already done it. Um, I was going to end it completely. Right. I was not going to be involved at all. Um, I, I am going to continue the men's group, but it's going to be a very different environment than it was the first time. I learned a lot. That's the whole point of doing what we did the last two months. Yeah. Um, there will be, like, I have a vision board video that I made for the men's group. I posted it. It's private. Only the people in the men's group can see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to start creating content for the men's group so that if I have 30 minutes, I can just do that, upload it and get it to them versus trying to figure out live calls. Yeah. Instead of doing live calls weekly, I'm doing them bi- bi-monthly so they'll get one every two weeks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to continue reading, doing the book recommendations, the workout stuff and things like that, and then answering business questions. Um, but I, I'm, I'm narrowing it down so that my time is going to be my time instead of on their schedules. Right. So that like... If they, if they know in advance in two weeks that we're going to have a live call on a Sunday night, they can plan for that shit. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like there was a lot of balls being dropped in, in terms of like my schedule and their schedules and trying to make all of that work. Yeah. Um, but I, I am I am excited about all of that because I didn't want to lose the men's group because I got benefit from that. Mm-hmm. Like I got that community that I was wanting. I have a very strong connection with a lot of those guys now. It, and that was important to me. So. Yeah. Um, I like the idea of recording videos yeah, for the be, groups. Right. That's a good idea. Because you're not getting interrupted. Mm-hmm. There's, you're not going to be talking about, you know, who has allergies. Right. Like, you know, weird whatever conversations. We we get into conversations about firearms and, like, sear training and knives and, like, because we're that's what we're all into. So, right. like, it, it really devolves into chaos after the first 20 or 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. So the videos eliminates that process. And then when we do the live calls, they can be that. It doesn't matter. We still got the information out. So. I don't have anything else, beautiful. That's all you. I don't have anything else either. Do you want me to keep TikTok going? Um, that's an AJ question because that's the AJ question. How how long are we into this right now? Like twenty minutes, thirty minutes? I have no idea. About twenty three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Then let's uh let's let's do the first like how far are you going into that today? Uh, we're doing the the intro. Okay. So yeah, let's send them over to YouTube. Okay. All right. So I'm told to end the TikTok, guys. I appreciate you guys popping in. If you want to be a continued part of the conversation or just watching the rest of the content, pop over to YouTube. We are live there. The number two, be better. I'll see you guys there. And it's over. I did want to point out that I saw that someone's username is your mom on here. And I want to let you know that I saw you on TikTok. So I appreciate your mom jumping from TikTok (laughs) to YouTube. That's funny. (laughs) Okay. You ready? Yep. So we are going over the four agreements. This is written by Don Miguel Ruiz. 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 Um, We have a link for this in the description of the video. It is an Amazon affiliate link. So if you buy it, we should get a kickback, but it is in the, the description. Yes. So I started reading this book the other day. Bought it a while ago. Sitting outside, enjoying the wind, stupid stone. And I'm reading. (laughs) As I'm reading this, I'm like, what the fuck am I reading? Like, this is, doesn't make sense to me. This is crazy thinking. I I can't believe a man wrote this book. Like, what? (laughs) And then I actually, like, started processing what I was reading. I was like, holy shit, this makes a lot of sense to me. (laughs) And the reason I had that first reaction of why the fuck am I even reading this is because I've spoken about it before. I have a very hard time at times um, differentiating reality with a delusion. So there are really times where I think I'm in the fucking matrix. Psilocybin will do that to you, babe. And I have to like reel myself back into reality a little bit or it's just a fucking simulation. You know, it's just, it's a lot for me. It's great. Well, this book proposes that we're just fucking living in a dream. Yeah. 
And that's why I had that I, I shouldn't be reading this. <laughs> so, yeah, he hits me with, what you're seeing and hearing right now is nothing but a dream. You are dreaming with the brain awake, and dreaming is the main function of the mind, and the mind dreams 24 hours a day. And I was like, boy, do not, do not even imply that... None of this is real? None of this is real. I could be in a pod... Floating in liquid somewhere. Then why does it hurt when you bang your shin on shit? I mean, video games now, you can stand in a room and walk around your room and everything's real. Yeah, but it doesn't hurt when you get shot. Right. So if you put on... <laughs> wasn't it that one game, Ready Player One, he had that full body suit where he got suit. shot and he's yeah. like... <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't think we're there yet, babe. Not in this reality. Not in this dream. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, man. So it, this book was written by somebody who lives in a psych ward. ward. Got it. Uh, no, because it makes sense. <laughs> I continued reading this and I was like, holy shit, when you remove the absurdity of it and you really sit down, it's like choice theory. Once you realize that every choice you make directly impacts your individual personal life, when you take away the metaphor or the whatever that you're living in a dream, you're like, damn, okay, like, all right, he's making points. Yeah. So he says the difference between the brain being awake and the brain being asleep is the material frame that makes us perceive things in a linear way. And I've written out a couple of definitions. So I want you guys to know when I read a definition, the definition is meant in psychological terms. So linear way means something different when you're flying a plane or when you're having a math equation. For psychology, linear way means a type of depth prompt that the human eye perceives when viewing two parallel lines that appear to meet at a distance. So you're looking down the road and the road disappears. You're looking at the ocean and the ocean just turns into the sky. When you look at something, you don't see what's going on over here. You don't see what's going on behind you. You have a linear view unless you have super deaf, super dope uh, peripheral vision, which I can still see my hand over yeah. here. Marching band did that for me. Um, in the sleep dreaming, that linear um, or the material frame dissipates. There are no longer constrictions on how your mind can dream because it's no longer the societal dream or the planet dream. You are in your own individualized sleep dream. Right. Right. This book fucked me up, guys. I don't... The dream of the planet is the collective dream of billions of smaller personal dreams which together create a dream of a family, a dream of a community, a dream of a city, a dream of a country, and finally a dream of a whole humanity. So how do you feel in hearing that? Um, I think that it's kind of bullshit. Is it though? Yes. Because, Be because two people don't share the same dream. Right. Nobody shares the same dream. But society is made up of billions of dreams. We follow the laws the government makes. Right. But that's not a dream. That's the government making laws. Right. That is part of the outside dream. Our individual dreams and this awake dream is influenced by others. It gets into it later in the book. Okay. Well, yeah, because right now I don't understand. Okay. We are born with the capacity to learn how to dream, and humans who live before us teach us how to dream the society's dreams. So. Cognitive bias. You don't burp in public. Right? It's an impolite thing. Right. You're, you don't pick your nose when you're sitting at the family dinner table. Right. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> so he goes on and touches on attention. So attention is the awareness, the concentration of awareness on some phenomenon to the exclusion of other stimuli. As humans, we perceive millions of things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. In using our attention, we can hold whatever we want to perceive in the forefront of our reality. So I had TikTok going, the chat's still going, and I'm looking at you, and my attention is focused on you. Right. All right. I feel like that's pretty... Yeah, no, that, that's it. You got it. Go we, team. <laughs> we also learn, growing up through childhood, that we can demand the attention of others, along with a need of attention from others, to the point that it becomes competition. Right. Okay. So... We touched on this in choice theory. As children, you learn that, 
Oh, damn. When I cry, mom responds. Right. External data. So that is that um, demand of attention. And then when it becomes competition is when you start getting into adolescence, you hitting puberty, you're now competing with other women to get the attention of men and vice versa. Okay. You're competing attention from idols. You're going to a concert. You want the attention from the damn band members, whatever. And I wanted to clarify that there should be no competition when you are married. Right. When you are in a very serious, committed, long-term relationship and you have agreed to be monogamous, there is no competition. Got it? That seems to be a very misunderstood thing oh, you mean in today's you, society. You shouldn't keep score? <laughs> Not even that, that you shouldn't keep score. There shouldn't be competition. So with that attention-seeking... Mm -hmm. Constantly f posting thirst traps. Right. Constantly updating Facebook, but not really giving you any information. I just need you to know that I'm fucking miserable in life right now. When you're married, specifically when I wrote that down in marriage, there's no competition because I wrote down dating and female attention, male attention. I don't seek attention from other men. I dress myself up and I doll myself up and I know that that gets me attention from other men. That shit's not even on my radar. When I feel as if that could become a threat or I notice that they're noticing me too much, it's not a, oh, oh my God. Like, it's why the fuck are you looking at me? Are you trying to take me? Yeah. So I am on high alert. There is no competition when it comes to you and me or you and I. That's why I wrote that down. So as said previously, we demand attention as infants for survival. And as kids get older, they do things to keep our attention or to gain approval. And in choice theory, that is referred to as the longing, the uh, needing to be loved and belonging feeling right that 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 is one of those four things that drive us to make the choices that we make even if it is not the right choice for us in the moment how's everybody doing are we keeping up sound is this making sense so far should be i've really had to like rewrite things from the book to this to make it make sense i did a lot of pondering listening to the wind the other day it was a lot to take in. Yeah. Was yeah. that was that the same day that you fell asleep on the porch? Yes, it was. Okay. I actually fell asleep underneath the mango tree first in that uncomfy chair. And I woke up to rain hitting me. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm outside. And I was like, oh, my God, my husband's inside. And I was like, my kids are great. And it's windy out. And I'm not sunburned. And I'm reading a book. And I'm stoned. I'm like, my life is great. <laughs> and then I moved inside and fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> or I moved onto the patio and I fell asleep on the on the couch out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's really what happened the rain started hitting me and i was like what and i opened my eyes and there was just it was overcast but there was like a little peaking of sun rays yeah. and it was a little sun shower it was a great and, moment for you oh it was fantastic and like i looked around and there was the little canaries i said it right yeah canaries <laughs> i had to think about that <laughs> i saw the canaries and just, it's the little things that make me happy so going back to learning the society dream, our parents teach us the language our community speaks. For us, it's English. We don't choose that. Uh, they teach us our manners, what is acceptable in public, etc. They also teach us our religion. We don't get to pick our religion as kids. Right. Uh, they teach us our morals. And sometimes they teach us racism. And as children, we don't agree to these things. It's things that are instilled in us because children look to adults as all knowing, you know, what's right. You're the adult in my life. You are somebody who's going to protect me. So everything that is fed to a child from an adult, even though they are not consciously agreeing to it, they are internalizing it and subconsciously agreeing to it. Makes sense. That's why I don't know. Eight year olds who say, shut the fuck up. Unless they're told, Hey, that's not really polite to say to somebody. And they just, that's what they hear at home. That's how they think it's okay to live life. All right. As children, we are rarely given the opportunity to choose what we want to believe in. We didn't choose our own name. When you think about it, being born into this world, we choose absolutely nothing for ourselves until we grow up and become adults and we are actually able to process data and form logical informed decisions on them right we didn't choose our own name we didn't choose any of the agreements like i've said 
And as we get older, we gain the understanding and are able to choose our own agreements. So, for example, if your mom or your dad grew up or you growing up witnessed them lock the car doors when you're driving down an African-American community, you grow up and you go, damn, that's kind of fucked up. You are now choosing your own agreement and saying they can live that way, but I'm not going to. The only way to store information is to agree with it. When you don't agree with information, you're not going to waste your brain power on remembering it. And I wrote down an example. There are a couple of people in my life who have different political views than me. And they can make their arguments and get heated and have their thoughts and opinions. I never shit on them. I don't retain anything they tell me because I don't agree with their point of view on things. Right. And these are the extreme things. I don't retain the information because I'm not going to imply it in my life. It goes against my morals. It goes against my values. And it goes against what I think is productive for the whole of humanity. So if you don't agree with it, you're not going to remember it. Any questions? Keeping up? Mm -hmm. Everything making sense? See you out of the chat. Well, I want to make sure it's okay. <laughs> if it's not, AJ will message us. Okay. Trying to stay focused. Well, I feel like I'm going quickly because there's no... Well, you can ask that. And if they have questions, they can they can say it in okay. the chat and then AJ can send it and I can relay it. Okay. I, this is... Are you keeping up? I am. Okay. And I'm multitasking, so... Right. So as I said prior, children believe everything that adults say. We agree with them. And our faith is so strong that the belief system controls our whole dream life. So... Oh, yeah, I have more notes on this. Let me just get back to this page. That process of coming into life and our parents and society showing us how to be humans. Dawn <laughs> calls this process the domestication of humans. Right. <laughs> you like that? Did you get a good That was funny. <laughs> you just personalized, like, that's your homeboy and shit. I but, feel but like you had to look for his name. <laughs> I was going to say Miguel, and I was like, no, it's not. It's Don. Don Miguel. So he calls this process the domestication of humans. And at first I was like, okay, well, fuck you. Because <laughs> I wasn't domesticated. But were you, though? Bitch, I was domesticated. <laughs> Looking at our children, if we did not correct them on things or guide them in life, they're just feral animals. Mm -hmm. They would eat dirt and bugs and never bathe, never brush their hair, no sense of hygiene. And they, probably they also wouldn't survive. So that is that. correct, yes. But they would be absolute feral animals. Because even though we have the intelligence that we do, if we don't put in the work of actually using that intelligence to be better. We're just animals. Putting in that work <laughs> to be better. I feel like have you ever seen those birds that are like yeah. I feel like that's what you're doing to me right now. Like, <laughs> you get it? <laughs> In human domestication, the information from the outside dream is conveyed to the inside dream. So our personal individual life is our inside dream. Everything you think in your mind, the way you live day to day, the choices that you make. The society dream, the humanity dream, all of the billion little dreams that have an influence or could have an impact on our individual one is the outside dream. I'm having a really hard time with this because he's referring to things as dreams instead of perceptions, realities. I know. Choices. It. That's why I made the notes that I made. Okay. You know. You, your, your, your perception is your reality. It the is, way that yeah. you perceive your environment is, is your reality. And no two people perceive that the same way. The only thing that I, I'm enjoying about this so far with the dream thing is that you can control your dreams through lucid dreaming. Correct. And I believe you speak things into existence. So that's pretty much he's, what he's saying. Our awake mind is the most lucid dream we could ever have. So you can control your environment. Correct. So children are domesticated like a dog or a cat. Bad behavior is punished and good behavior is rewarded. Y'all can't tell me that's not the case because 
I do that shit. Yeah. You want your tablet back? You're going to quit your whining. And you're going to start acting right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't take my screens. <laughs> <laughs> I hit our son with that the other yesterday at the park. Yeah. She started throwing a fit because Sissy wanted to swing. We always do that when we get to the park. She swings for five or ten minutes and they run around and play and we do our thing and pirate aliens or whatever's chasing us that day. And then we go back on the swing for 10 or 15 minutes and we leave. So we got there and he instantly threw a fit. He was like, unacceptable. Nobody is playing with me. And he's crying, stomping, walking around the park. And I'm like, no, that's not, babe, that's not how we behave. I was like, you can come over here and communicate with me and tell me what's bothering you, or I'm going to take your tablet. The choice is yours. And he continued. I was like, all right, no tablet today. And then he stopped. He was like, Phew. I was like, oh shit, did you just take a deep breath? I was like, did you just, did you just do the thing? And I lost my mind. I was like, you did it. I was like, you regulated your emotion. <laughs> you calmed down. You're not whining. You're going to get your tablet. <laughs> and like, he was so excited and he lost his mind. And that's why he told you this morning. Yeah. I'm going to take a deep breath instead of whining. Yeah. I rewarded the good behavior. And he knew if he continued the bad behavior, there was going to be a consequence. You know, in the 80s, when kids did that, they got picked on by other kids mm -hmm. and it corrected that behavior. Yeah. Do you remember, did you guys play dodgeball when you were in school? I know that there's an age gap, but like that was a very violent thing for us when we were kids. We tried to knock each other's fucking head off our shoulders when we played dodgeball. I was always the last person standing at dodgeball and I would get my bullies so pissed off at me because I was so good at dodging that they would literally try to hit me in the face as hard as they could with those balls. We also know that you can catch and we're not even gonna go there with taking balls to the face. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> if this were Discord, I'd be spamming fucking filthy. Yeah, yeah. So. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. What I was going to say was, mm. is that when that was very much a thing and kids were still allowed to pick on other kids, kids that acted like that got fucking dinged in the head who weren't even playing dodgeball because they were being little bitches. Mm -hmm. Society has changed so much that they no longer try to correct that behavior. And then when people become adults and get into the real world and try to act like that, they find out that they can't ever succeed in life because that's not how the real world behaves. Mm -mm. That was the whole point of all yeah. of that. You know, while at the park, when he was having his little temper tantrum, he, he was getting pretty loud. There were people looking at us. Yeah. Like waiting for a reaction from me or seeing what I was going to do. And I just, I talked to him calmly and I raised my voice a little bit because he was trying to get a little bit louder than me. And I was like, these are your options. And he took a deep breath. I don't know where I was going with that. What did you just say? I, I don't. I, well, I was done. I was talking about dinging heads in the kid with dodgeballs. But that scenario where somebody was looking at you guys in the park waiting for you to blow up that. Um, I was going. Oh, I can't. I can't do that. I was going to tell you a story, but I can't do that on YouTube. That might have to be a Patreon conversation. I really there there was a, there was a train with that guy. It was the way that you conducted yourself with your children around other parents is where you were going with that. No, I don't That's think it That's how you it started it. They were watching you and the way that you were you were correcting the behavior of the child. Where was I going with that? There's so much happening at once. Yeah. Yep. My attention slipped. And just like that, my thought train is gone. That's why I don't want you watching the chat. <laughs> okay. So as a child, one is made to feel good or bad. I don't use those words with the kids. Even when they say... Our son specifically. If a dinosaur eats somebody, does that make them a bad dinosaur? <laughs> no, it makes them hungry. And Yeah, right. So I avoid using good and bad with them because I don't want it to be so black and white. When a dog bites somebody, you could say that dog's a bad dog. What you don't know is behind that history, that dog was severely abused and pinned against other dogs and now is in constantly fight or flight and perceives everything as a threat. Right. I mean, that's an extreme, but yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Right. So it's not that the dog is bad. Right. Dog was severely abused and now is reacting out of trauma. And you're teaching them to be free thinkers. Right. Asking why is healthy. When you tell your kids because I said so, you destroy that. Mm -hmm. I hit them with, I don't know. If I don't know, I'm not going to make up an answer. And I'm not going to say just because. Bro, I don't know. I'm not an astrophysicist. I don't know what make rocket ships go. <laughs> There's times Grayson brought a little soldier guy up to me and he was like, what's this called? I was like, I don't know. Go ask Chris. <laughs> And he came back out and he was like, it's a bazooka. 
And I was like, would you look at that? Chris knew. I didn't. I don't have all the answers, kid. So with the pun kids are punished and rewarded multiple times throughout the day, but they are more likely to be punished than they are to be rewarded. Being brought up this way as children gets us hooked on the people pleasing. And it also instills a fear of, I don't want conflict to varying extents. It's about to get fucking deep guys. I shouldn't have slapped that on the screen. I'm so sorry. I was trying to be dramatic. It's your computer. Slap it all you want. <laughs> <laughs> we also learn how to mask so much so that we lose who we are as a person. And that typically happens before we become a teenager. So everybody knows every single person can look back on a point and they're like, yep, that that is exactly the face my mom would make when she wouldn't say she was disappointed in me. But she I knew. Right. And it could be over the smallest thing. I painted my nails black. And now my mom thinks I'm a satanic worshiper and her whole perception of me has changed when I just like the color black. That kind of thing. It doesn't even have to be communicated. Like I said, it could just be a look. That is communication, though. Right. Nonverbal communication is the largest communicator. Right. In those instances, that's when you're like, OK, I can't paint my nails black anymore. I guess I'll just wear pink to make her happy. And you just locked a little bit of yourself away. And now you're building that mask of who you are. The domestication is so strong in childhood that eventually we become our own domesticator. Oftentimes, it is with the ingrained system of punishment and reward that our parents instilled in us, which oftentimes repressed who we are as a person. You know, that's actually, I believe that that's why everyone is not artistic. I truly believe that. I believe that everyone has the capability to create art. Oh, yeah. It is just being able to utilize that part of your brain. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that ability. Yeah. For people who had it cultivated in them when they were young and it was put on the refrigerator and they were told how good it was and it was honed, that's really good. But if you put a shadow underneath of the armpit, it'll look more real. Like, right. you know, that kind of shit, that creates an artistic thought process. Mm -hmm. I believe that that parents are are responsible for the death of their children's Creativity. inner child. Yeah. Oh yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Yep. So the belief system, which I just talked about, goes into adulthood with you from your parents, is like a book of law that rules our mind. So within this book of law, there is a judge and there is a victim, and you are both of them. The judge judges everything and everybody down to the weather, animals, the way something is painted on a wall. Critics. My OCD is not okay with that. Right. The judge uses this book of law, even if it is morally or logically incorrect, to rule our personal dream. The judge decrees and the victim, which is also you, suffers the guilt or the punishment. So... The judge could be viewed as your emotions or like your knee jerk reaction. And the victim will be the logical you three or four days down the road. Be like, damn, OK, I did kind of overreact on that. I shouldn't have done that. Forgot something during housekeeping. Oh. Everybody caught up. Everything's making sense. AJ hasn't popped in yet. You haven't. Nope. He told me, me a, so. AJ said that everyone talks shit because they don't get punched in the mouth anymore. When we were talking about the dodgeball thing. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And I agree with that hundred percent. There's mm -hmm. no real threat of violence anymore. I mean, there is, but it's extreme and they, they make it sound like it's way more frequent than it really is. Right. Mutual combat needs to be a thing. Mm. It is in Texas. If you want to fight someone in Texas and there's a cop there and you're like, I want to fight you. And the guy's like, I want to fight you too. You can look at the cop and go mutual combat and then you can fight. I would love that. I would definitely have to like train. But if I could resolve shit by mutual combat, let's fucking get it. Um, Hang on one second. Okay. I'm going to just go over this right now so that okay. um, I don't have to write down a whole bunch of notes. We said. Cameras on me. I know. Okay. I'm Because I'm, I was trying to hide myself making a fucking long ass note. Um, we said and to the wizards behind the screen that we were going to be doing um, super chats only moving forward. 
So at the end of our live streams, you know, if we have a little bit of free time, we may answer free form questions. But at the end of our live streams, we will be doing super chat reads where we answer super chats exclusively. And then we're cutting the live stream short. We're done when we're done. Mm -hmm. Um, We are doing Q and a live streams for Patreon. So that's what our Patreon live streams will be moving forward. Will be that hangout time and Q and a. So for people who just want to do Q and a sessions and want to bullshit with us, you need to join Patreon to get into those exclusive live streams, which adds more value to the Patreon. That was the other thing that I'd forgot this morning. That's a good thing to touch on. It is. You know, you know, that's a good thing to touch on Me. that booty, that booty do. <laughs> My mind went stick your tongue out, flare your nostrils, try to wink at him, raise your eyebrows, maybe, maybe do a shimmy. <laughs> and I just sat here of, looking at you. Yeah, I can see why you just sat there. That's a whole lot of decisions to make in a very quick amount of time. Could you imagine if I just tried to do all at once? That would be pretty entertaining. It would, I would be like, are you having a stroke, babe? Do you smell toast? What's going on going? over there? <laughs> Got the shimmy and then the tongue. Uh. Huh? <laughs> You didn't flare your nostrils. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so shimmy. Huh? I can't. <laughs> I can't. It's too much. I feel too stupid. And you didn't that wink that one. time. That was good, That though. was the one. I you was too You know that that's going to be a meme in, in Discord. <laughs> too uncomfortable. That was good. You know, really, there are really not a lot of times where I get uncomfortable doing something. Yeah. My body was like, bitch, what are you doing? <laughs> That's funny. I'm sweaty now. That's funny. Uh, I'm going to practice that, though. Yeah? Yeah. So you can do all kinds of weird shit for Discord? Well, I, now I got to shimmy. I got to work on it. Okay. I got to work on it. <laughs> Knowing that that made me uncomfortable, I don't like feeling uncomfortable. So that means that's something I have to overcome. Yeah. So, bitch, we're going to nail this. And I'm going to seduce you. <laughs> not like that you're not. <laughs> That's not going to be the way to do it. That's not not going to do it. Uh, okay. So justice is paying for something. Oh, so I wanted to touch on justice. Because in the book of law, everybody has their own sense of this is not. There is no justice unless this happens. Right. Right. For some, for example, for somebody who's been cheated on, well, I'm going to cheat on you now, so we're square. That is their form of justice. Mm. Some people's justice is just walking away and accepting that that's how you're going to be. So justice is paying for something once. You did something one time. You recognize that that behavior was incorrect, and you've paid for it. Pay to play. Got it. Injustice is paying more than once for each mistake. So for one single mistake, for example, you get a speeding ticket. And the cop goes, all right, you're going to get five fines of $1,000 for this one speeding ticket. I hope you learned your lesson. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Yeah. You pay the fine. I can't use you as an example. No, you really can't. can't. (laughs) You're such a bad influence. When When you tell a cop, just go ahead and write your ticket so I can go home. It doesn't go well. Yeah. Yeah, they find things to write you tickets for. I believe that. Pay to play. Yep. Okay. (laughs) So how many times do we pay for one mistake? Excuse me. I'm burpy from the soda. We also haven't eaten yet today. You know, that AG1 thing really fills me up. I know. Yeah. Too bad we're not sponsored by them yet. Don't talk about them. Too bad that green supplement we take in the morning (laughs) fills me up. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All right. So how many times do we pay for one mistake? The answer. The answer? Answer. Is thousands. Is that you thinking about the weight of the statement you're about to make? I put answer and thousand together. Yeah. The human is the only animal on earth that pays a thousand times for the same mistake. They call that penance. Correct. We make a mistake. We judge ourselves. We find ourselves guilty. And then we punish ourselves. If justice exists, then that was enough. We don't need to do it again. But every time we remember it, we judge ourselves again, and then we are guilty again, and then we are punished again, and then again, and again, every time we vi- we, vi- we revisit that memory. Whew, that again and again and again got my stutter going. Ah, note to self. 
How many times do we make our spouse, our children, our parents pay for the same mistake over and over again? Every time we remember their mistake, we blame them again and send them all of the emotional poison we feel at the injustice. Pause. This is exactly why people have breakdowns in communication when they're trying to solve problems because they can't let the past go. Mm -hmm. And they want to throw up, well, in 1925, you said I was a bitch. You told me once that I had a fat ass. You, you said once that my sister looked good in heels. Like, right. this is that, that mindset because people can't let go and move past things. Right. So we send them all of the emotional poison we feel at the injustice, and then we make them pay again for the same mistake. Mm-hmm. The judge in the mind is wrong because the belief system, the book of law, is wrong. We see it all the time in society now. Did you know that in France, there is no legal consent age for sex? I did not. That's also a um, cultural standard. Yeah. I, well, it turns out if a six-year-old gets graped over there, that six-year-old is going to have to testify with evidence to prove the rape or it didn't happen Hmm. or the grape. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's things like that all over the world. So. Age limits are a cultural standard. Right. Right. The reason I'm bringing that up, though, is because it just this just said that the judge in the mind is wrong because the belief system, the book of law is wrong. Right. So courts in France are upholding this shit. That's wrong. But because it's going by the book of their law, they can argue that it's right. Your whole dream is based on nothing but lies. Fuck all men. Women will only use you as a bank account. You will never get a job looking like that. No one's ever going to love you the way you are. You're going to wear that out. Looking, you're a little overweight. Do you really think you should be wearing that? Every little nitpick that has gone in our life and we have ingrained in ourselves is a lie. You know, this rose tattoo, I don't know if you guys. This is the first tattoo, first visible tattoo I ever got on my body. And when I came home with it, my mom was like, you are never going to have a job. Oh, really? You're never going to have a good career. She was like, I am so worried about you. You're going to have to wear long sleeve shirts. Like, how are you going to make it in life? You just ruined yourself. It was a lie. Today's society, I see more people looking like us running businesses than I do otherwise. I'm not saying my mom was wrong for that. She that had was, genuine concern. Right, that was her generation. That, right. That, that was true for her generation. Yep. I've experienced that. Yeah. I personally have experienced that. I I've mean, experienced it in the tattoo industry. I've been told because in tattoo studios before I owned my own shop that because of the tattoos on my face, I wouldn't be able to work in certain studios because at the time nobody had them. I mean, I've right. had tattoos on my face since the 90s. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, you know, it wasn't post 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 Malone. Yeah. <laughs> post post Malone. So as a whole, the planet dream is a nightmare, right? So when you look at the planet, all of these billions of people are living their, their individual dreams simultaneously. And with all of us living our dreams simultaneously, there is so much fucking chaos that literally the whole dream that we all experience is just a nightmare. There's human suffrage. There's anger, revenge, yelling, cheating, addictions, and not just to drugs. There's addictions to internet, addictions to sex. There's addictions to oneself. Your selfishness is above all else. Where do I want to read? So, if we compare the dream of society with the description of hell that religions all around the world have progmulated, we find they are exactly the same. Religions say that hell is a place of punishment, a place of fear, pain, and suffering, a place where the fire burns you. Fire is generated by emotions that come from fear. Whenever we feel the emotions of anger, jealousy, envy, or hate, we experience a fire burning within us. We are living in a dream of hell. You know, okay, so full disclosure, I'm a fucking nerd. 
Yeah. Can you read that that thing that you just read back? Whenever we feel the emotions of anger, jealousy, envy, or hate, we experience a fire burning within us. And that is the fire of Darth Vader. You bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That was good, right? The fire of Darth Vader. Yes. Yeah. That went, was, went to the dark side, felt a fire. That was good. Sorry. That was really good. I, I wasn't expecting I that. I can't help myself. That's My brain works that way. I'm not a nerd like that. You, you read so. that shit and I was like, come to the dark side. <laughs> and then you were like, the fire thing. And I'm like, I have the high ground. No, the fuck you don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I enjoy you. Yeah. You're so fun. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's bad. If you consider hell as a state of mind then hell is all around us. No human can condemn another to hell because we are already there. Others can put us into a deeper hell, but only if we allow this to happen. Choice theory. Every human has his or her own personal dream. And just like the society dream, it is often ruled by fear. We learn to dream hell in our own lives, in our personal dream, the same fears manifest in different ways for each person, but we experience anger, jealousy, hate, envy, and other negative emotions. Our personal dream can also become an ongoing nightmare where we suffer and live in a state of fear. But we don't need to dream a nightmare. It is possible to enjoy a pleasant dream, and it is all based on the choices that you make day to day. My life was so chaotic when I kept in touch with 10 or 20 people regularly. There was drama. There was issues. I can't believe you told them that. I am my, my stress levels, my peace yep. went up. That I would rather be alone and sometimes feel sad that I don't have a lot of people in my life to have the peace and tranquility that I do. Right. I am so okay with that. It does suck sometimes knowing that I can't ring up somebody and be like, hey, get the girls, let's go out Friday night. Right. You know that you could, though. It just would be a very small circle. I actually, I've been going through this hard the last few days. That's what that uh, vlog was yesterday yeah. on Patreon, is that I have three people in life besides you that I can actually, if, okay, um, the men's group is reading um, Own Your Past, Change Your Future by John Deloney. Mm -hmm. And in that book, he talks about connections and how we have more digital connections in life, but less real connections with people. And he defines friendship as who would you call at three o'clock in the morning if there was actually an emergency? How many people do you have? And in that book, he said that 75% of the population does not have someone to call at three o'clock in the morning when their world is falling apart. I have three people. You, Jeff Graham, Sean, I guess four, because I I count you as us. Right. If I'm going through something at three o'clock in the morning, it's the both of us going through it. It's not individual. Oh, yeah. I would expect you to wake me up. So it's Sean, Steve, and Jeff Graham. That's it. I don't have yeah. anyone else. I'm not calling anyone else. And then I started thinking about some of the shit that I see on social media that I disagree with from friends Yeah. that I unfollow. I don't have a connection with these people. They're just acquaintances. Oh, I started unfriending people real quick when <clears throat> I disagree with their shit. Right. So the whole point of all of that is that you choose your so social circles. Mm -hmm. When we lived in small, small clans and tribes, right? We had small groups, 25, 50 people at most. And you live in such a small community, all of that bullshit doesn't happen because that was literally your world. Now it's so easy to be like disposable people next mm -hmm. and bring somebody new into your life because there's so many fake connections out there. That's why you have that drama and all that bullshit because when we have smaller, smaller groups, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. I, I've never once had Sean, Steve, or Jeff go, I can't believe you said that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, you said something. I made a note. You said, and this is kind of prevalent to the discussion. Okay. We are billions of people living their individual dreams. Right. And the planet is a nightmare. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that there are billions of people out there living their dreams. No, there are people just Existing. living through the motions. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that there's even a billion people on the planet truly living their dreams. Well, when he says living their dreams, he means... I know what he dream, means, yeah. but when you think about it and you use that statement, the way that our brains process information, I don't believe that that many people are actually living their dreams. You know how many right. people are just existing in life, waking up, waiting to die? Right, He's they're living a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's a choice, but still. It is definitely a choice. That's where my brain went when you made that statement, so I had to make a note. I... <laughs> 
Are we talking about, so going back to the calling people at 3am, are we talking about people we know would answer and help or? Yeah. What's the point of calling them if they're not going to actually stand up and be there for you when you need them? I have two people. There's you and the kid's dad. Yeah. It says a lot about our connections, right? That's the two people I would call, yeah. I know that I have more than that in terms of long distance relationships because I Dakota Dakota saw that vlog yesterday and immediately messaged me. Yeah. That mother he's a real fucking person. Like mm -hmm. if he lived close by, I know that he would be a part of my life. Oh, exact you guys same would be thing. doing shit together. Yeah. I know for a fact. So I know that I have quality connections with people. But in my real life, 3 a.m. emergency, who am I going to call? Mm -hmm. I think about that list and all the people that I see on Facebook. I, I I don't have a connection with anyone on there. It's all fucking bullshit because of businesses. Yeah. You know, I, I have AJ. I know AJ would answer the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning if I called. He'd be like, why the fuck are you calling me at 3 o'clock in the morning? But he would right. answer. I have that. I have a relationship with people. They're just not in my real life. Yeah our brains aren't meant to deal with that either because I have those connections, but I don't have that safety net mm -hmm. and people need people. We do. I enjoy being isolated. I enjoy not dealing with society and being out in public and like not leaving the house unless I have to, or going somewhere when there's no one around. I enjoy that more than those connections, mm -hmm. but I do have that. I have my workout time with Sean. I could have range time with Dakota. I could hang out with him while he dog trains. Like I have those bonds. They're just not here. Yeah. Anyways, this is a lot to process. Yeah. I get that. I don't talk about it much. I, I really, I honestly don't put a lot of thought into that because it does make me sad. Yeah. It, it's depressing. Yeah. Yeah. We really just live our lives in these four walls. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of four walls, but yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. We're working on it though. We're building our own tribe. We absolutely are building our own tribe when you think about it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not in the Discord as much as you are. Yeah. I'm not as connected to the community as much as you are. I care about the people in the community. I don't know. Maybe it's just a me thing and I'm just going through what I'm going through and I'm struggling and it is what it is. Yeah. And my perception's off, but I do definitely feel like you have a stronger tie to the things than I do. Yeah. Yeah, it just comes down to yeah. to being being active in the the shit. It's exhausting. Yeah. It's a lot. It's my brain. Tis my brain. How much longer do we have on the introduction? Um, we have this page and then one more. Okay. So however long it takes us to get through it. Okay. I was going to take a pee break, but. Oh, you can go ahead and do that. I can take a hit. Dope. I haven't done this the whole podcast. You have the comms, Captain. Oh, I'm dangerously sober, guys. No, I'm kidding. Don't imply that in your real life. Don't ever say that. <laughs> it was a little jokey joke. Well, I'm going to look at the chat. Heather, I appreciate you telling me that I'm active. I really don't feel like I am. There are days that I just don't pop in there at all, and it's just because I have so much shit going on. <coughs> <coughs> Definitely vape check. Yep. Oh, motivation and vape smoke check. Hydration. My eyes are watering from the hit. That does not say motivation. It says hydration and vape smoke check. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Zeke said Dangerously Sober was the name of my first album. What was the second one? <laughs> the Adventures of an Alcoholic. The Stories of a Stoner. The anecdotes from an addict. That was just a hard conversation for me. I also feel vulnerable saying that I need like outside connections with people. Apparently I just have a lot to work through. Totally forgot she was here again. <laughs> in her house. That's hilarious. It's twice now. That is twice now. All right, I'm back. <coughs> Zeke, that makes me feel good. 
He said, I'd answer the phone at 3 a.m. for you guys. I'm I, up anyway. I believe you would. And that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. we, I, I, I am cultivating that community. And I'm not saying that it's the entire Discord. It's not. What do you mean you're cultivating that community? I, I am cultivating my own tribe. Yeah. I have created bonds with people that I, like, I know Stephen, Stephen, Death Clan is a prime example. I, I'm, I'm willing to believe that if I had his phone number and I called him and I was like, bro, I need you, I think he would be there for me. Yeah. I would be there for him. If I was close by and he called me, I would, I would step out of my comfort zone to help him mm -hmm. because I, I'm finding quality people. Yeah. It, it's, it's, selfishness versus selfish selflessness mm -hmm. and I, I don't know anyways it's it's a lot it really is yeah. a lot to process well oh, you're gonna go in this on i'm not i was taking a deep breath because it's a lot to process okay i i'm just sitting here thinking about things right because i do feel the same way you do i have that longing to have like outside connections and understanding with other more specifically women right i want women friends i want a group of women and the women's group was that for me i just don't have the time for it right and my depression has been kicking hard and I've been isolating. And I'm going to be honest, like I'm a little envious of what you got going on with people in Discord. And I know that it's because I'm not taking the time to do it. I'm almost scared to do that. Why? Because I am a very inconsistent person when it comes to friendships. I. That's adulthood, babe. Now, it's not just adulthood, though. It, I, it's my mental illnesses. Right. It, it's very hard for me to maintain relationships. It really is. Yeah, but when you have a bulletin board where somebody can leave a note and you can leave a note when you have the moment to do it, that's yeah. that's what Discord is for me. I pop in when I can, and like the people who have my number, if they need me, can reach out to me. Otherwise, I check it when I have the availability. Yeah. There's days that I go two or three days and they'll check the men's group. Right. And then I pop in there, and, and I'm there all day long. It really just depends on, one, my mental health. It depends on how busy I am if I'm editing. Right. Because I can discord and edit at the same time mm -hmm. um it really just depends on on how long our tangents are on the editing process but yeah it, it's just one of those things the isolation aspect he talks about that in that book too we are supposed to be by nature we are social creatures because evolution the the hundreds of thousands of years that we've been on the planet if we are alone we are going to die yeah you, you watch that TV show we watch alone on the History Channel. That's the only mm -hmm. channel we actually watch on television. To yeah, be really, the History Channel. Um, but on that show, those people go out there and they're survival experts, and you watch every one of them have a fucking mental breakdown because of the isolation of it. Mm -hmm. It's why when people go to prison and you go to solitary confinement, you don't have interactions, it makes you fucking crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's not good. So that isolation thing I, is my biggest downfall with my depression. Because I, I get depressed and I don't want to be around people. And then I get yeah. suicidal. And it happens every fucking time. And it doesn't take more than a week or two. It takes a few days for me. Yeah. Honestly, the day that my depression kicks in, the suicide's there. Yeah. And... We should probably go easy on the words. Oh. You can continue talking okay. about it. Just so control, alt, delete, unalive. Don't, right. Yeah, don't use the S word. So when my depression kicks in, I am immediately battling those thoughts. Yeah. And it's so draining. It is so draining fighting my own mind to keep me alive. Yeah. And there are days where the depression hits and it's there for the day and then it's gone and I'm fine for a few weeks. And then there's times where my depression hits and I'm out of commission for three weeks and I haven't talked to anybody besides you and the kids and maybe my mom. Yeah. Like my friend, I'm so thankful for my friend Jackie. I can go months without speaking to her. And then I'll hit her up out of the blue and she is so excited to hear from me. And like, it's just, it's like we pick up talking. That's like an actual was. friendship though. That's I, I'm willing yeah. to bet you that more than you think in your life would be willing to be that. That's just, cause that's an adult. Yeah. I, I, I have people that I haven't spoken to in more than a year that if I was to call right now, they would answer the phone. Yeah. I just, I'm so used to that built up animosity from people. Yeah. Like, why haven't you responded that's to me? That's childishness. I see you're on Facebook. I have that. I guess it's just something I have to unlearn and start to learn to trust people again. I agree. I have not thought about any of that until you brought up that conversation. I just had a breakthrough. On the pod, on a live stream, in front of 316 people. I'm holding back tears so fucking yeah. hard right yeah, now. Yeah, don't ruin your makeup. It looks good. I know. I put, I put a lot of time into this. I'm really trying to amp it up because you're looking at me every day. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Trying to get spicy with it. <sighs> Well, with that being said, let's get back into it. And I also want to say I love you guys. Like, I really appreciate you guys being here. You make life a little bit more fun. Yeah. Okay.
So we just read about the whole thing about hell and how nobody can put you in hell. It's already there. They can put you into a deeper one, but that is by allowing them into your life to right. push you further down that. So we can't see the truth because we are blind. We are blinded by the false beliefs in our mind, and those can be rooted in the incorrect book of law that we are taught by our parents. And some of those false beliefs could be always need to be correct and prove the other person wrong. We believe that we don't deserve better or that we're worthless. We have horrible handwriting and grammar. What the fuck is... I wrote E-V-E. A fantastic musician. I love her music. I don't know what that, that's doing here, though. Um, oh, that's an A. We are waiting. We are waiting on others to figure out what we need. We are waiting on you to figure out your fucking handwriting. <laughs> it's bad, guys. I'm going to show you. Let's see if we can see it. It's right there. No. You're not going to see it. It really looks like E-V-E. Yeah. And now I'm thinking of that one song with Missy Elliott and that Eve. Okay. <laughs> um, so we are waiting on others to figure out what we need. That's a false belief. Nobody is just going to put the pieces together right. and be like, oh, she's giving me the silent treatment. She's upset that I didn't tell her that dessert was good three days ago. It's not going to happen, guys. They're not going to piece it together. Or... You are avoiding saying it and you're just leaving. And you think that's the right way to cope with it because you're not yelling at them. Right. That is also a false belief. You still have to communicate. In this, you are setting yourself up for your own suffering. You are creating your own hell and putting weight on these false beliefs. All right. So back to little blurbs. This is why humans resist life. To be alive is the biggest fear humans have. Death is not the biggest fear we have. Our biggest fear is taking the risk to be alive. The risk to be alive and express what we really are. Just being ourselves is the biggest fear of humans. Everybody is so worried about the backlash. I sit here and I think on how I'm going to say shit so I don't have to worry about Oh, well, is this what you meant by that? Yeah. Oh, my God, you support domestic violence. Yeah. we <laughs> Fucking people, man. We've actually had people say that stupid shit to us. Yes. And before, there was a fear there. Right. Of coming across as offensive. Is so, that at least gone now for you? It is, yeah, okay, no. Good. I was going to say, because my biggest fear is actually is actually death. Like, the, the th my brain has the hardest time really grasping the concept that when I'm not here anymore, the world doesn't exist. Because my my perception is reality. Right. So when I'm no longer here, reality is no longer here. Mm -hmm. I actually lose sleep over that shit. You want to know what my biggest fear is? Losing you. Dutch ovens. No. Legit losing you. I don't know how to run our life. Shh. I'm getting emotional. Don't do that to yourself. <sighs> I did it. Yep. Well, there it went. have to talk about your biggest fear <laughs> oh blame me for that you're living your dream over there don't fucking make it a nightmare because i said something you're right i didn't have to say anything i could have just kept it in but i want you to know you're important to me <laughs> i did this to myself i made the choice to say it out loud oh, i fucking love you so much it's so stupid <laughs> okay I don't know what I'm looking at. I'm just trying to look composed for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> that was good. So just being ourselves is the biggest fear of humans. So I brought up, I did have a fear of pussyfooting around things to right. not offend everybody, to make everybody happy. And in doing that and having that fear, I was suppressing, suppressing myself. When I think of something ridiculous, I'm going to be like, oh, is that what you just said? 
I'm going to do that. I'm going to mock a little bit. If something is absolutely ridiculous, I'm going to do it. And if it offends you, yeah, fuck them. I don't care anymore. This is who I am as a human being. I'm a crack, a little jokey joke. And if you get offended by it, that's your problem. My jokes aren't made for everybody. My jokes are geared towards me. I am the comedian of my life. And if you by proxy get joy out of things that give me a good kick, I love that for you, but I am over here just vibing. <laughs> we have learned to live our lives trying to satisfy other people's demands. It's because we're taught that as a child. Falls right back into what you said earlier. I'm so good at taking notes, guys. <laughs> All you, want, you want me to get you a neck pillow so you can rest that big ass head of yours? Miss Ego over there? I am so good at this. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Get one of the ones that fold. Oh, yeah. Like I for the it. airplane. I feel it here. Yeah. When I do that. Ah uh -huh. ha! Oh yeah, I gotta stretch it. Wow, there's a lot going. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I committed to it. You really did. I'm that was, joking. That was all there. The mouth opening and everything. That was that was true commitment. It was a stretch. Oh, I got it. To get it, because you know when I look down so much from the. <laughs> I'm done with the joke, guys. I really don't think I'm that egotistical. When it comes to my note taking, I do think that I am above par, because of the way that I think of things. And I'm able to articulate myself in certain ways. I think my note taking and my organization is one of my top tier things. Yeah. Not enough for me to have like a massive ego about it. I can joke about it. <laughs> I feel like you took that super seriously and now I need to clarify. Am I fucking up your dream, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Is this reality? <laughs> it took everything I had not to make a really sexual comment when you had your mouth open and your head up. And I'm still stuck on that. So everything that you're you're going on about now, like that's not where my head is. Just continue with your book, please. You're right. That is a <laughs> pretty prevalent view for you. Yeah. So. Yes, it is. Can you continue with your book, please? <laughs> so it wasn't judgment. Uh, no. No, it wasn't. Okay. I wish you said that. I did, Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to not do that okay. on the podcast. So back to this. We have learned to live by other people's points of view because of fear of not being accepted and not being good enough for someone else. Did that sentence come out right? I don't know. I'm reading that again. We have learned to live by other people's points of view because of the fear of not being accepted and of not being good enough for someone right. else. Okay. That happens constantly. Yeah. Everybody's trying to fit into everybody else's box. I can't tell my mom how I truly feel because it's going to make her angry. I wish I could tell him how I feel. I just, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Bro, I should have broken up with her like two weeks ago, but she's a crier. That choice theory shit really changes lives. Yeah. It really changes your outlook on all of that because everything that you just said, I'm like, that's a you problem. Mm -hmm. That's a you problem. Not a me problem. Yeah. So, through the process of human domestication, which is what I'm going to call childhood from now on, we form an image of what perfect is and we try to be good enough. We form that image of perfect. So we have to live up to that or we're not good enough. So we create this image to be accepted. Not being perfect. So in not being perfect, we reject ourselves. And the level of self-rejection depends upon how effective the, adult, the adults were in breaking our integrity. In childhood. I'm going to read that one more time. The level of self-rejection depends upon how effective the adults were in breaking our integrity in childhood. So in your human domestication, depending on how effective your parents were on breaking down your integrity will dictate pretty much where your self-worth is right now as an adult. If you are with somebody who hits you or tries to control your friend group, tries to control what you wear, tells you who you can and cannot speak to, tries to cut you off from your family. If you say to yourself, I'm not going to leave because I don't deserve better. One, your parents pretty effectively broke you down. Accepting that is going to be a very hard thing to accept, a very harsh thing to accept. And you're also going to have to accept that your parents failed you. And in two, that goes back into you are living by 
a false law and creating your own suffrage. That's two very heavy things that I wasn't ready to read in this book. So you know you're not being authentic with yourself. So you're frustrated, you feel false or fake, dishonest, miserable, depressed. This is the result of an unnatural self-feeling of you wearing that social mask every day and you're silently praying that others don't figure you out. The fear of being discovered is almost paralyzing. That's where I was going to use that catatonic word and I didn't think that was appropriate for that sentence. It I think is. paralyzing. I mean, both of those yeah. work though. So, in, um, what's the word? Submerging is not it, suppressing. In suppressing who you authentically are and wearing a mask and not sharing your true feelings and not being honest about your opinions and not being upfront about what you want in a relationship, you are setting yourself up, like we said prior, for your own suffrage. That praying that others don't discover the real you because they're not going to like you. I am very heavy on that North Korean defector right now, Miss Park. I can't say her first name properly. Yomi, I believe her name is. Everyone in North Korea is told your favorite color is red. They're not free thinkers. If you say something outside of if you're a free thinker, you're more likely to be executed or sent to a prison to die. Right. It's communism. That is a paralyzing fear. In that instance, I could understand being absolutely horrified to free think because there is a very real, my life is in danger if I do this. Outside of hardcore domestic violence situations, if you don't like the fact that your girlfriend is posting promiscuous photos on Instagram and you're scared to tell her because it's going to cause an argument or you're going to be viewed as controlling. Why choose to stay in that relationship? Right. I, it's, it just that whole thought process of being miserable and wearing the mask and not being your true authentic self. If I, if I was not my true authentic self, we would not have any of this. You guys in the chat right now would not have a podcast to look to for answers or for guidance. You would not have people on the internet reaffirming or validating the things that everybody in your life is telling you is wrong. If I was not, or if Chris was not his true authentic self, everybody would be exactly where they're at or unalived. Saying that out loud is fucking impactful. Yeah. I would guarantee, I would say probably 60 to 70% of the chat right now is not living their authentic selves. Yeah, I don't believe they're living their dreams either. But When you recognize that living your authentic self could save people, why wouldn't you do it? I never thought that me just being myself would, would do any of this. Yeah. There was a time that I suppressed myself so hard. I was a shell of a being. I, I wasn't, I didn't have plants. I wasn't painting. I wasn't reading. I didn't have a job I liked. I was a mom and a vessel for somebody to have sex with. That authentic self is not just destroyed by parents. It's also destroyed by the school systems and the way that the, the bully shit goes and like the, the um, clickiness and people feel a need to fit into their social settings. That's why people, that's why kids are such dicks and adults are not like that because the social circles get so small and that need to fit in goes mm -hmm. away. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Where did I write down nine? Where's number nine? I see number 10. 10's there. Number nine. What's going on, Mrs. Note Taking? Shh. <laughs> Wish I had a button. <laughs> On you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You know what this is? This is God going, yeah, you want to fucking gloat? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like I need to rewind. Oh, my thumb was covering it. Oh. Okay, I get it. I see it. Okay. <laughs> Humbled. <laughs> We dishonor ourselves just to please other people. Yep. Dishonor is such a powerful fucking word. Mm -hmm. That word really had meaning back in the day. You know, for example, your last name in medieval times meant everything. Right. If somebody mentioned your last name and it got you a new connection with somebody else with a powerful last name, yep. y'all could form a fucking army. When somebody dishonored their family named, they were shunned. They were exiled. Like you knew that we are better than this. And you went ahead and did that, you're dishonored. Go fend for yourself. You're probably going to die in the wilderness. You knew better. Yep. We dishonor ourselves just to please other people. Mm-mm. I feel honored to be your wife. Oh, man. I feel honored at the fact that out of every woman in your life that you could have chose from or the potential women in the future that you could have chose from, I feel honored that you chose me. And I had a lot of shit that came with me. The thought of dishonoring our marriage or dishonoring you as my husband fucks me up. Don't do this. So... And I know that there are other people out there that feel that way about their significant other. But they dishonor themselves fucking daily and they don't care because it's me. I can handle it. Every single time you say, eh, I can handle it. By that thousandth time where you go, I can handle it, you fucking can't. Yeah. If you would never dishonor your spouse or dishonor your marriage or dishonor your children that you vow to stand by them and defend them and do everything right by them, why wouldn't you do that for yourself? <laughs> so I, <laughs> next to my note number nine that I couldn't find, um, I wrote down an example to provide to show being true to your authentic self or dishonoring yourself. And I feel like that's totally irrelevant now because everything that I just word vomited was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. So moving on. So humans punish themselves, right? When you do something wrong, you berate yourself probably for days afterwards. When you view yourself as punishing yourself in an extreme like that, where you are making yourself pay for something for one instance over and over and over again, you are abusing yourself. If you are okay with abusing yourself over time, you're gonna be okay with abusing others. The way that we judge ourselves is the worst judge that has ever existed. We are, we are our own worst critics. Mm -hmm. yeah. For an example, if you were to make a mistake in public, it is very rare for someone to own that mistake. They're going to try to cover it up. They're going to try to deny it. Instead of just owning it and denying it, your judge is going to look at you and be like, wow. Not only did you just do something wrong and you knew it was wrong, you just fucking lied to everybody about yeah. it. In your whole life, no one will abuse you as much as you abuse yourself. There's alcoholics, there are drugs addict, drug addicts, there are people out there having risky, unsafe, strange sex, uh, staying in an abusive situation. The limit of your abuse to yourself is exactly the limit of abuse that you will tolerate from somebody else. If somebody abuses you more than you abuse yourself, you will be more likely to walk away. If somebody abuses you less than you abuse yourself, it could be a cunt hair less than you abuse yourself. You are more likely to stay in that abusive situation. And for everybody that is unfamiliar, that is an actual form of measurement in our household. Oh. <laughs> yep. And we're live. I can't cut that. Like I did the last time I used it. Well, um, <laughs> that is one of my favorite words. 
<laughs> uh, one of my favorite words <coughs> to hear one of my favorite words to say, not necessarily as an insult. I enjoy it as a pet name. I like saying it casually, playfully, as a use of measurement. And back to the book. I feel like I have to cough up a, like a fur ball now or something. <laughs> Let's see. If you abuse yourself very badly, you can tolerate someone who beats you up, humiliates you, or treats you like dirt. Why? Because in your belief system, you say, I deserve it. This person is doing me a favor by being with me. I am not worthy of love and respect. I am not enough. People will rationalize the abuse that they give them, that they receive... Because they are abusing themselves and saying, fuck, I'm lucky that they're even choosing to be with a mess like me. The fact that they're choosing to love me, even though they hit me, I'm honored by that fact. You guys deserve so much better than you give yourselves. Let alone what anybody else in this world gives you. You are not giving yourself enough. And we talk all the time you can't help anybody. You can't do anything for anybody else when you're on zero. So outside of the self-care and your significant other making sure that your love tank is full, what are you doing to make sure that your own tank is full? And it's more than just taking a bath for an hour once a week. It's checking in on yourself. If something happens and it just frustrates you slightly, don't repress it because then those little frustrations build up. Ponder it. Think on it. Ask yourself, why did this bother me so much? And if it was something your significant other did, talk to them about it and say, hey, I noticed this. What's your thoughts on it? I don't know how I feel about it. I'm trying to figure it out. Everything makes sense? We have the need to be accepted and to be loved by others, but we cannot accept and love ourselves. The more self-love we have, the less we will experience self-abuse. Self-abuse comes from self-rejection and self-rejection comes from having an image of what it means to be perfect and never measuring up to that ideal. Our image of perfection is the reason we reject ourselves. It is why we don't accept ourselves the way that we are and why we don't accept others the way that they are. Not only do we build ourselves like the perfect image, we build a perfect image of our spouse. Yeah. And when your spouse doesn't live up to that perfect image of you, you're like, damn, who did I marry? Once everybody gets past, not everybody, majority of the time, once people get past that two year obsession phase and they haven't done the courting and all that other shit, that's where that, why we don't accept others for the way they are. Because you built that idolized, romanticized version of them. Do you have anything you want to add? Because this next blurb is a very long one. Uh, nope. I'm going to put the camera on you. You can read that blurb. I'm going to grab another drink real quick and blow my nose. Okay. So camera's on you. You have the calm. I'm going to go do my thing real quick. Oh, while you do that, I'm going to take a hit real quick then. All right. That works. You got me emotional. My fucking nose is running. Oh, I'm so sorry. You guys, this might be kind of cocky of me, but Chris is very much not an emotional person. So knowing that I got him emotional is like, oh my gosh. I didn't tell you that. was a big one <coughs> put it on you <coughs> no. <laughs> I'm like, <coughs> well there goes the rest of her day i wonder if when we do that we should put up like a taking a break thing screen 
Intermission. <laughs> yeah, because we have them. Like I have all the overlays from this and I could just easily pop that up and be like intermission and put some music on and we could take a, a minute or two and then come back to it. Okay. I'm okay. Definitely got sweaty on that one. Yeah. Yeah. This is um, just one of those new cartridges that you got me mm. and it's very, or that you picked out for me and it's very strong. Do you guys ever take a really fat hit and you're like, <gasps> Afterwards, <laughs> that was me just now. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to breathe and swallow at the same time. Remembering that you're no longer amphibian and you need oxygen. Yeah, that was rough. Okay. So. Going back to what I said in the very beginning. In your childhood, subconsciously, you are agreeing to the things that your parents are presenting to you. And then they become engraved in you ingrained in you and then once you gained cognitive bias logical thinking being able to process things having just that cognitive awareness you are able to recognize those agreements you have the choice to either continue agreeing with them or go that's not for me i'm going to go agree to something else in these agreements you tell yourself who you are what you feel what you believe and how to behave the result is what you call your personality. In these agreements, you say, this is what I am. This is what I believe. I can do certain things and some things I cannot do. This is reality. That is fantasy. This is possible. That is impossible. If you would have told me four years ago that you and I would be sitting here doing a podcast on relationship advice and marriage, damn near impossible. If you would have asked me that seven months ago, I would have said not not possible. Yeah. Seven months. Because I didn't think this was going to go anywhere. I did. I, I We wanted to do um, coaching. Yeah. Ooh. This is not at all what we discussed. Oh, no. So seven months ago, this wasn't even a thought for me. You mean like the book readings or? Any of it. I mean, the podcast, when we started the podcast, I knew it was going to be a thing. Right. That was six months ago, babe. It's been six months and four days since we posted our first video. So in November of last year, this wasn't even a thought. We got everything up and running. We, we filed for our, we got everything situated on the 11th of December. Our first video went up on the 17th of December. That was seven months ago. Holy shit. Yeah. Well, technically six because this month isn't over yet. So you're right. <clears throat> Yep. It was possible. Everything we've accomplished was possible. Yep. If we lived in that mind state of, we don't have the time. We don't have the funds for that right now. We just got hit by a hurricane. We made it work. Yeah. I, I tell people all the time when, when I have business discussions that if you, if you, it, it, I actually worded this in, in the vlogs that I've done, but if you take one step towards something, it's going to take one step towards you. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Yeah. And whether you look at it as God or the universe, however you want to believe, when you start making decisions and taking active steps and being proactive in your life to get the things that you want, the universe will get the fuck out of your way. Mm -hmm. It's going to throw obstacles at you to see how bad you really want it. That's just the way it is. Yeah. <clears throat> AJ just sent me a picture on March 4th. We had 12,000 subs on YouTube and 192 patrons. We now have over over a thousand patrons, almost one hundred thousand subs on YouTube since March fourth. I went to go push up my glasses. I guess that's a comfort thing for me now. Yeah, pushing my glasses. That's insane to think about. It also makes me uncomfortable. Apparently, like, Jen said that that's also. The, I'm sorry, it makes you uncomfortable. I'm listening. I didn't mean to interrupt you. You were talking about pushing your glasses up. Yes, it, I'm sorry, I'm, I was thinking. It makes me uncomfortable because this kind of growth is like unheard of. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it's but, not that uncomfortable. It's just, I don't know how to process it or feel about it. Our brains aren't actually meant to deal with this. Yeah, this the, is. The level of, of connections and things like that. Um, Jen also said that that is the day that we started Discord. March 4th was the day that we created Discord. 
we have almost 900 people in discord yeah, yeah. that was started on march 4th mm -hmm. we built the patreon community or the discord community in march yeah. i'm feeling a whole lot better about my connections right now yeah Yep. So you're telling me that I have only been I've I've only known of Zeke and Gen A's since March. It's been three months. It's been three months. I feel like I've known them for three years. Right. We're creating real bonds with people, babe. We are cultivating our own community. Oh my god. Our tribe, if you will, which makes me feel really good because I, I've always wanted to use that in the name of a business. The word tribe. To be better tribe. Well, I was going to do, uh, when I originally opened one of my studios, I was going to call it One Tribe. Yeah. But I ended up not using that name because there was an organic body jewelry company that had something close to that and I didn't want it to be confused. Yeah. Anyways. That's crazy. Okay. Yep. It's crazy what time and depression does to you. Yep. Hearing that time frame... Everything I just said prior about my emotions when it comes to my community and my connections and like building friendships and shit is so illogical. Yeah. Knowing that it's only been two months. Yep. My time is so distorted. It feels like it's been years. Yeah. It's been three months. Like years is kind of an exaggeration. Honestly, it feels like it's been between eight and nine months time wise for me. Knowing it's only been like two and a half months or a little over almost three months. Insane. You look bored by me. No, I, I'm processing a lot. I've got multiple screens going on. Okay. So I, I have been um, because I've covered the chat. Mm -hmm. I can't see the chat unless I look over here. Yeah. Um, I have the I have the stats for you two pulled up. Mm -hmm. um, AJ has been the metrics guy this entire time. I haven't paid attention. I'm looking for benchmarks. Right. 50,000, 100,000, a million, that kind of shit. But I'm now obsessing over statistics on YouTube because that's what's on my screen. And out of the corner of my eye, I can see our current viewers. And I watch it, watched it go from like 480 mm -hmm. to like 290 and then down to like 240 and then up to 315. And like, I'm trying to figure my brain's going right. like, okay, is this conversation boring people? And that's why they're dipping out. Like I'm, or you got up and walked away for a second. Right. I know. I, but I, I, my brain is doing what my brain is doing. I know. So I'm I'm all over the yeah. place right now currently. I'm listening to you. Yeah. But it's nine other things going on at the same time. Okay. Lots of tabs open. I appreciate you clarifying that. Mm -hmm. I also want to know that wasn't me trying to like shit on you. I'm just trying to like maybe another possibility that will help ease that. Maybe it's the conversation. Or... Yeah. Okay. One single agreement is not such a problem, but we have many agreements that make us suffer, that make us fail in life. If you want to live a life of joy and fulfillment, you have to find the courage to break those agreements that are fear-based and claim your personal power. The agreements that come from fear require us to expand a lot of energy. But the agreements that come from love help us conserve energy and even gain extra energy. Each of us is born with a certain amount of personal power that we rebuild every day after we rest. Unfortunately, we spend all of our personal power first to create all of these agreements and then to keep those agreements. Our personal power is dissipated by all the agreements we have created, and the result is that we feel powerless. We just read an email. I believe it was an expedited email of a young woman who is living on her own, trying to make ends meet, pay her own bills and everything, and she has a medical condition. And she is living her life dictated by her family. She is their chauffeur, their errand runner. The person I'm calling, and if you don't get it done, you're not going to hear the end of it. We're going to make you miserable. Right. She felt absolutely powerless in that situation. The only thing she could do is stand up and say, I'm not agreeing to this anymore. Breaking those agreements that are fear-based... In her, in her email, she said that she was worried about losing her family. They would stop speaking to her, or cut ties, or stop helping her financially. That's that fear that's driving her to agree to the things that is running her life, that is making her powerless. It is difficult breaking those fear-based agreements. Nobody said it's easy. 
Anybody who said it easy is not gloating. I wouldn't say gloating. They're fabricating. Because anybody who has really truly sat down with their own psyche and broke down why do I do this and what do I need to do to change this understands that it's not a fun thing to do. Right. So if they're like, oh, yeah, it was super easy. I just did it overnight and I was fine next week. You're trying to show off. You're trying to... As it's just as it's just viewed as an emotional clout for me. You want emotional clout. You want to seem better than everybody emotionally or ha- more higher intelligence, and make it seem like a piece of cake for you and everybody else is below you because they can't. Ha- they just haven't figured it out yet. Right. My brain's going a million miles a minute. Was that a cohesive thought? Mm-hmm. We have just enough power to survive each day because most of it is used to keep the agreements that trap us in the dream of the planet. How can we change the entire dream of our life when we have no power to change the smallest agreements? If we can see it as our agreements that rule our own life and we don't like the dream of our life, we need to change the agreements. When we are finally ready to change our agreements, there are four very powerful agreements that will help us to break those agreements that come from fear and deplete our energy. Each time you break an agreement, all the power you use to create it returns to you. So going back to that email that we covered as an example, that energy, if she were to break that agreement of, I am no longer your errand boy, I'm going to work and get my life going, she would be ending that, um, it's almost like a vampiric, parasitic energy. In severing that, you're severing that flow. So not only are you going to get returned back to you, you're going to get that reinvestment of the energy you were putting out. Okay. If you adapt these four new agreements, they will create enough personal power for you to change the entire system of your old agreements. And that is the end of the intro. So the next video will be the first agreement, be impeccable with your word, and that will be going on to Patreon. Yep. That'll be a Patreon exclusive content. Do you want to do those lives or do you want to do them as just a recorded video? I think we can do them as lives. Okay. I mean, if you guys would want to do that as the lives. Well, I mean, that would be more for the Patreon community. You can need yeah. to ask that to Discord. That needs yeah. to be a Discord question. Okay. Um, I'm going to get into super chats. So for those of you who are actually enjoyed what we just did mm-hmm. um, and want to hear the rest of this book and you want to hear us talk about it and do what we're doing, join Patreon. Um, because one way or the other, it will be there, whether it's in Discord or it ends up on Patreon and standalone videos. Um, if we do those um, as Patreon content, it, mm-hmm. we have to allow the $10 tier to come in on that. Right. Okay. Uh, Kitty said, ebb and flow in relationships are so underrated. Vanessa Ruiz said, I got my shirt yesterday. Thank you. Hell Talk yeah. about the comfort of those shirts. If you live in Florida, that thin material is a fucking godsend. Mm-hmm. Um, Liz Benedict said, my future husband and I deleted our social media yesterday to direct our attention to more beneficial and productive things. Thank you guys for everything you do. I fucking love that. That is so huge. That Their is life going, is going to change. Yeah, that's going to re-engage and reconnect. We actually, we discussed that yesterday while we were at lunch with Jordan. Mm-hmm. That was one of the questions that we had. How like how much screen time do you guys have? Yeah. Yep. Um, James Shadwick said, what is the best way to send extended messages, asking advice and explaining my situation a little? Love your content. Thanks. You guys are amazing. Um, best way to do that is to email us at to be better co at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Be detailed. Don't add anything of DVSA or child abuse because it'll get rejected. Um, and be detailed about your situation. We don't need details about your past and your childhood and all that shit unless it's relevant to the conversation. Right. We need to know what's going Mm -hmm. on in your life and and the details in that aspect. I want to jump in and say a way that that could be relevant to your current situation is you've divulged or you've um, brought your partner in on, say, a past trauma and them knowing of that trauma have now started to instigate things. Right. For example. Right. That would be a prevalent information. Uh, Alex Boyce said, also change my YouTube name to match Discord. That shit's funny. I love that, though, because it helps us see people. Yeah, I'm able to recognize you guys in the chat. We're recognizing a lot of names, which is super gangster. Uh, Desk Clan became a member again for four months and said four months, only two months shy of being an OG. 
Uh, I actually am pretty sure he is an OG because of some of the emails that we got from him before we had a podcast. Okay, I yeah. think that that qualifies. I would say as an that OG. qualifies. P Manly G just uh, just joined Patreon two days ago in the Discord. I want to try photography and take pictures in Lagrange, Texas, for you, Chris. Maybe with my Harley. I can't hear that name dun, 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 without dun, that dun, going. Dun, 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 dun. If that was, if I could have like a theme song when I open my car door and put my foot on the ground, it would start right as my heel touches. Uh-huh, huh, yeah. huh, huh. <laughs> Yep, I love that song. Uh, Hank Williams Jr. actually covered that. That's one of my karaoke songs. Yeah. Love it. Yep, so that's the Super Chats. Um, last, last minute supers, if anybody wants to get some last minute supers in, we will read those. Otherwise, it's going to be time to call this a day. You have anything that you want to add to any discussions or anything like that? No, my brain, my brain's tired. Yeah, mine is too. There was a lot to take in. Yeah. Um, what well, was it? Informational? Did you feel it was beneficial? Um, I, yeah, I want to. I want to see what the actual agreements are. I I like the idea of owning your life. Yeah. And being responsible. I don't believe in victim mentality. Right. I don't. I believe that your perception of your reality is your reality. So if you believe you're a victim, you're a fucking victim. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. I've had a lot of horrible shit, abuse, the whole nine. My life is fucking mine. My decisions were mine. And my outcome is fucking mine. And I've got a dope-ass fucking life because of it. Yeah. So, got another super chat. Mama Gamer, you make a difference. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I love that we... I love to know that we make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are making changes. You know, that keeps me up awake at night sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Wondering if we're... Or if the things that I say specifically is doing any more harm than it is good. Maybe. I, I don't think that's the case. Yeah. But it's just something that keeps me up. Um, Jasmine said, I sent an email, but I feel I wasn't detailed enough. I have some updates. Should I resend or follow up? Um, I got to be honest, I want to answer this and tell you to resubmit the whole thing rewritten mm -hmm. and, and put in there like rewritten email. Revised. Revised. Um, but if you do that, it needs to say it needs to say that in the subject title so that it can be found and addressed. Um, that's more of a question for the wizards. I, that There you go. There you go. <laughs> Jen A is on shit. With odds. <laughs> yep. Ooh, we're about to get a super chat. These are my favorite kind of things to read. Oh, I love super chats. Yeah. You go ahead. You want me to put it on that screen? N oh, no. I just, I was, no, I, no. I had a whole thought process. Okay. So I said, with odds, and I was like, I want a staff to like call out the wizards. And I was like, no, they're not here. They're not going to be able to see like the gleaming light or like a Batman signal, like wizards. And I was like, no, that's not going to work. And I was like, walkie talkies. And I was like, no, that's not going to work either. They're too far away. And I was thinking of like the sprint phones, like the beep beeps. Yeah. The next tell chirps. Yeah. Well, we have discord, so it kind of does the same thing. And then I thought about bracelets. <laughs> like I tap the bracelet and like, I don't calm down. James Bond Ugh. hard drive gaming for $10 said, I want to say happy birthday and 12 year anniversary to Katie. I love you. And you are my everything. Oh. Good for you, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, you want to call it? Um, I am starving. Yeah, I'm good to call it. All right. Guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, next Thursday, uh, Wednesday, we will be doing Choice Theory. Choice so theory. for those of you who are nor normally doing that for Thursdays, we will be doing tomorrow night's live still. The new schedule takes effect next week. Um, we just got another super chat. I'm going to read that before I hit the button. And it says, from Big Danny from 999, those in the chat, what was your favorite part of, of this live today? Nope, oh, another super chat. Damn, you guys are on it. I'm 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 gonna be here as long as these chats are coming in. It's it's my representative from HR. Oh yeah, Jared from HR. AJ's like, wait. Wait. Waiting. There it is. Because of y'all, I found a therapist. And psych to work on my past and current issues. After my first super chat, I started taking myself on weekly self dates. Mm. It's a long road ahead, but y'all make me want to put in the work. 
Hell yeah. Are you in Discord, Jared? Are, are you, Jared from HR, are you in the Discord? As we're waiting, I saw Jen A said I would drive Zach insane with a walkie phone. Yeah. Guys, I'd be up, because the kids get me up at night. I'd be up there at like 3.30 and be like, chirp, chirp. Hey, guys, I'm researching teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I did that last night. Did you see that in the Discord? No. So there was a loud crack of thunder last night. Scared the hell out of her son. He came running out of the room. Sissy came after him, and I'm trying to diffuse everything. I got them back in bed. And I slept in the living room just in case because it stormed all night last night. Yeah. I didn't want them waking you up. So I was laying on the couch. Did he message back? Uh, yes, he is in Discord. Okay. Jordan sent a super chat too, though. Are you going to continue your story? Yeah, so I was, I'm laying on the couch. And I'm just scrolling. I don't remember what I was doing. I'm probably playing my Monopoly game. And I started touching my, my teeth. I was like, huh. I was like, is this like... Is that like touching my femur? Like when I touch my tooth because it's bone, right? No, it's not bone. It's not. I went down a whole rabbit hole of teeth last night, and I just had added like a whole new subcategory to why being alive makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. On top of your bones being wet. Uh, Jordan said, just wanted to make you wait another minute. Jared is in Discord. Jared... um, I'm guessing by your name and the photo that you're actually a dude. And if you are, you should join the men's group. There's a lot of, a lot of value in there for people like us. With that being said, guys, I'm ready to call it. I'm on Monopoly. Go to add me in the discord. I put it in there somewhere. I was trying to get free shit. Gotcha. We'll (laughs) see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.